Welcome to the Minecraft Education Edition series. This session was recorded on Tuesday, June 16, 2020. Hello, and thank you for joining the Assessing Student Learning session today. We are delighted to have you with us. I had the pleasure of kicking off the session, so I'll start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Melinda Knight. I am a program manager on the Minecraft Education Edition team, and I am responsible for partnering closely with teachers like yourselves, your students, uh, technology coordinators, and our education or engineering and design teams to craft updates to our experience, uh, both in the game and on the education Edition website. I love my job. My favorite aspect is getting to visit classrooms, spending time and watching how Minecraft is used uh, and learning about how we can make it better for you as, as um, educators. So later in the meeting, I'm going to be sharing some updates on some new experiences that are coming to TM, some of the things that we've been working on uh, that we're excited to show you and get your feedback on. Uh, but for now, I'm going to pass it over to Mike Call, who's a professional learning specialist with I2E, who will kick off the session. Hello, everybody. Um, my name, like you said, Mike Call. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited to hear what Melinda is going to be presenting later about how Teams and Minecraft are going to get even better together and the integrations that are going to be coming out there. I'd also like to welcome, we've got some special Global Mentor guests joining us. Welcome, James and Stefan. We're thrilled to hear from you coming up after Melinda. And uh, I'm I know you guys have a lot of experience to share and we're excited to hear from you. We're, we're saving the best for last and we'll we'll hear from you guys in just a little bit. So uh, before we get started with the presentation, I'd just like to take a second and let everybody who's participating know these webinars are being recorded and the video and links are going to be shared in a follow up email next week. So don't worry about taking notes. Just sit back and and enjoy and get ready to learn. I'm going to be talking today about some of the great assessment features that are built into the Minecraft Education Edition and how I've used um, Minecraft and Teams together. Um, but first of all, let me uh, let me introduce myself a little bit. I live and work in Davis School District, which is near Salt Lake City, Utah. Over the past few years, I've worked in a number of different educational capacities and used Minecraft in a lot of different ways. I started with a after school program and I've taught fourth grade and done summer school programs and now I work in a secondary school. So a uh, lot of different ways to use Minecraft and I've enjoyed using it across all kinds of different content areas and I especially love it when you can use Minecraft to include many disciplines together. So a few years ago, um, my daughter, who was in third grade at the time, she's in high school now, came home from a relative's house and was just so excited about this game that she'd played. And they were building these cool things and there was these strange green mobs, uh, monsters that exploded that were called creepers. And she talked me into purchasing a pocket edition for her tablet and pretty soon, uh, obviously it was Minecraft, um, I, uh, I got kind of sucked in right away with her and had a lot of fun with it and it became pretty clear to me early on that this would also be a great tool to use in my classroom and I was really lucky to have a supportive principal who let me go to some trainings and purchased the the licenses for my kids um, it's been growing a lot since then now my district uh, has Minecraft just as a part of our office 365 tenant and all the students in my district in my district have access to it and it's it's been a blast using it and I just as I begin I wanted to point out you know one of the things that was great for Minecraft and for me as a teacher was that when I brought Minecraft in my classroom students were the experts right away and I still don't come away from a Minecraft club or some activity in my classroom where we've used Minecraft where I don't have a student teach me something. I'm always learning from them. They're always showing me cool things and there's just a really special experience for me as an educator when the when the learning starts to go both ways when when I'm learning from them and they're learning from me and it, it builds a really amazing sense of community and it's really fun when students become the experts for each other as well um, you may have a student who isn't the one who typically shines academically but all of a sudden he's helping out his classmates on how to do things and it's just it's amazing it builds a, a really powerful sense of community within a classroom and even within my school I've seen that and yesterday I hope you caught uh, Steve Isaacs 
training. If not, the videos I think will be coming out. Um, definitely worth watching, but he, he shared a quote how we're not trying to turn students into gamers, but we're trying to bring who students are as gamers into their into their, their learning experiences, into the classroom. You know, the, they, they became the experts with Minecraft because they, they were willing to try new things and to fail and to keep trying and to look things up and to go to Google and, and all the different wikis and things for Minecraft and watch YouTube videos and, and they stick with problems and they, it's just amazing how, how they, they become great learners when they're gaming and, and we can bring that into our classroom. So with, with that in mind, let's look at some of the ways that we as teachers can assess student learning. It, it is a game, but it's also a learning tool. And there's a lot of really great ways that that we can assess learning both formatively and summatively in our classrooms um, using some of the tools that are embedded right within Minecraft. The, the three main things we're going to look at today in our training, uh, the camera, which is a really fun tool that's built right in there. Uh, there's a tool called the book and quill that we'll get into. And then also there's some pretty cool variations of signs, posters and boards, which all have kind of the same they're, they're similar in their functionality, but they're different on scale and, and a couple different things that, that I'll show you today. So a lot of really fun tools. Um, the camera, again, we'll start with that because it's one of the funnest tools for, for assessment, one of the most powerful assessment tools that, that I've used in my classroom. And so let's let's talk about that for just a second. Um, first of all, to to get the camera out as a tool, it's it's in your inventory when you're playing in creative mode. You simply click on E if you're on a desktop computer or laptop. Hit E for your everything Tori, and you can search and find the camera right within there and then put it in your hot bar. So if you can see the. Um, here on my screen, um, I, I've put it into my inventory. It's in that first slot on my toolbar there, my hot bar, and I you can tell that it's in my hand because you can see the camera right here on the right hand side. And so one of the easiest ways that, that you can use the camera is to uh, simply when, look have wherever your crosshairs are pointed at when you're in the game. Um, when you right click, it'll, it'll, you'll hear the little camera shutter sound and then this little Polaroid frame shows up to show you the picture. Um, it's really simple. You just kind of walk around, point and click. One little tip that I have there on the screen, if you're really close to different types of objects that you might interact with, like a door or something like that in Minecraft, if you hold the shift key down, it'll let you take a picture. And so if you ever find that you're having trouble taking a picture, just try that, hold the shift key and it'll let you photograph what it is that you're working on. Um, some great ways that, that I've used this in my classroom um, students can take progress shots which they can submit to me as a teacher and I can kind of give them some feedback or they can get peer feedback from from taking photographs. I, uh, I teach a foundations drawing class and we go over one and two point and three point perspective as a part of the standards in that class and Minecraft is kind of a fun way to introduce that to my students and so this year I had them make a, a build a, a house or the kids came up with all kinds of different things, but because Minecraft uses right angles so much, it, it's a great way to teach perspective. And then they made their their build and then they used the camera tool to go in and, and photograph it from different angles to show that they could show what a, a one point perspective view would be versus a two point or a three point perspective. And then they're able to export those photographs and take them out and use them as, as a resource for their drawing projects. So that was kind of a cool way I used it this year. Another class, we did a, a project that's available in the, in the learning library. I was teaching design thinking, which is a design process where you empathize with people. And there's a great stempathy or empathy lesson created by Ben Kelly, who's a global Minecraft mentor, um, where you, you assign a group of students a family that's a Minecraftian family that they have to learn about and they have these problems and you you'd come up with a design solution that meets meets their needs and my students were using the the, the photograph they one of the one of the collaborative uh, jobs that was assigned to each group was one person had to be the photojournalist and they would go around and just take pictures of 
the different group members working and how they they solved the problems and, and took a bunch of pictures and later on I'll share with you how they they actually submitted and turned those in but cameras a really fun tool it's there's more than one way to use it I mean who who doesn't love to take a selfie and there's there's some great ways to to take selfies with Minecraft so uh, one of the first options is I don't know if you've done this with your family but where someone has a tripod and a camera and they set it up and then click the button and there's a little timer and they run over and jump in the photograph and then the little red light on the camera goes off and you you take your picture of your family that way and there's a way to do that in minecraft so instead of um instead of just pointing and clicking with the camera you can actually place that camera right on the ground and then as long as you're close enough to it you can click on the camera and it'll it'll flash and fizzle a little bit and then within a couple of seconds it'll take the picture and it it'll follow you around so if you're the one taking the picture it'll follow you and so you can run over if you if you look here in this picture i uh i set up the camera and then i ran over and stood by this wandering trader and it took my picture here with the wandering trader so it's a, a great way to to do that with that uh that design thinking lesson I did earlier this year, one of the final projects was for the whole group to take a selfie in front of the home they'd built for their Minecraftian family. And that was a lot of fun for him to figure out how to do that. So another way, sometimes this way is a little bit awkward. And so if you're playing Minecraft on a keyboard, you can toggle between different points of view, which is really handy. Um, by pressing the F5 button, you can change it from first person view, which is what we were dealing with before, to second and third person points of view. Um, so when you find a view where you can see yourself, and as long as you're holding that camera in your hand, you can also just click the right click button and it'll take a shot. So now that we've taken a bunch of photographs, the question is how do we access those? So they're they're stored in the memory somewhere and the there's a couple different tools where you can access those photographs the first one i'm going to talk about is basically it's kind of like the sd card in your camera it records all the photos and puts them in chronological order it's called the portfolio and this is also available in just in your inventory in minecraft and when you open up the portfolio like like i said you'll see each of the the different photographs you've taken and let me pull up this laser pointer here, but you can flip through your photo album by clicking on these little arrow keys and it'll take you through each one. So one of the other nice things about this portfolio tool is that you can add a little caption down here at the bottom. So if I was teaching my students about eye level in photography or something like that, you could show eye level and just this is a higher eye level versus a lower eye level. You can delete photos. So if there's a a photograph that you took by accident or that you didn't like just hit the trash button there and it'll be gone so and the other nice thing about it is that you can export this portfolio and it'll create a pdf which you can download and save right onto your computer and then students can submit those uh, an example uh, where i use this in my fourth grade classroom so we, we would play a game with dice where they would roll dice and then create a math problem with those dice and then within minecraft they would have to create a model so maybe they rolled a three and a six and they made a three times six multiplication problem they could build a model of that and then within the captioning they could write the number equation that they created and then include a picture of their model that represented that and so really really a fun way and a powerful way that students can can bring math to life i love using minecraft in my math classroom so the there's some limitations with the portfolio so there's another tool that i want to show you today that we hinted at earlier but the book and quill so the book and quill amazing tool it can hold up to 50 pages of images and text so you can fill in and type a whole page over here you can add pictures you just to edit a page you click this button down here with the little pencil on it and you can add a photograph right from your portfolio you can add a text page you by clicking these buttons here you can move a page 
to the right or to the left. So it's got a lot more flexibility. It doesn't have to be in chronological order. You can do all text. You could do all photos. You can still caption a photo. Uh, within the book and quill as well, if you wanted to add a caption and then type over here, that's also an option. And the other fun thing about a book and quill where the portfolio can't be shared. The book and quill you can actually publish and share within the game so the other players could open up your book and look at your photographs and read your text and we'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, back to that design thinking lesson I was talking about earlier. Um, so I had a number of different requirements that the students had to, to do to, to submit their assignment and their final submission as a group was this book and quill and so as a part of the assignment, they had to identify specific needs for a family, and so they had to list those needs and then show pictures and justify how their design met those needs, and that was a part of what they included in their book and quill. Uh, each student had different jobs within the within this collaborative project, and so there was a page dedicated to each student and what their jobs were, and then a photograph of them completing or working on one of their projects within the within the world. Um, and then, of course, there was that final group photograph that was included in there and also a reflection what went well with this assignment what was hard was was there some communication issues was there just a problem working within minecraft that was tough finding a location what was it that was hard and it was just a great place for them to reflect on what they learned through that assignment um, other places i've used this um, Students learning about the water cycle created models of the water cycle and then wrote a little book kind of showing each of the different steps. Um, students have created actual stories where they, they wrote a story and created the illustrations within Minecraft and photographed them and actually published a storybook right within Minecraft. I've seen teachers use these as lab notebooks for different projects. So there's there's a lot of different ways you can use these. Um, and then the really nice thing is that when you're ready, you can go right in and you can publish it and share it either inside or outside of the game. So let's look at a, a couple of those options there. So the first option in order to save a book in Quill, in order to share it, if you wanted to, to share it with another player or export it, there's there's a couple things you have to do. So you'll, you'll have the book in Quill in your hand and then right click to open it up and then there's highlighted in yellow here is a little button where you sign your book and quill. So once you hit that sign button, it takes you over to this next page here where you can add a, a title to your book right here. And then once you're finished and ready to go, got a title on it and everything, you hit sign and close. And then your your book is going to change a little bit. It's once you've hit sign and close, you can see from the note there, it's not going to be editable anymore. So this is kind of the publishing moment. And then it if once it's published or once it's ready to go, that's when you see the export bottom or the export button appear, excuse me, there at the bottom of the screen. So once you've done, once you've signed and published, you can hit that export button. It'll bring up a little little screen on your computer to to save it and you can save it and then submit it through teams or whatever learning management system your students are using so kind of fun um, with within the game there's some options as well which can be really useful and you can apply to your to your your lesson design but once you've once you've signed the book your book begins to glow so it has that kind of purple pink haze that kind of shimmers on the book and you can do a number of things with that you can simply just pick q and throw it on the ground and someone else can pick it up but that's not a, a long-term way to share it but this book can also so on the in the middle here you can see you can place a book within a chest and when a student opens up that chest they'll be able to see the title of the book and who published it and have that available and then they can open it up and read it that way. Uh, lecterns are a cool new feature in Minecraft, part of the, the villager update where you can actually just 
place your book on top of a lectern and a student can come up and right click on it and access the book right there on the lectern as well. So if you want students to share their projects with each other, or give each other feedback, that's one way you can do it without even leaving Minecraft. Uh, can be a really fun, fun option there. So that's uh, what we're going to talk about as far as the book and quill and the camera and the portfolio. But we want to look at a couple other tools as well here. So uh, another part of Minecraft that that is available is of course signs which are available in the regular game and there's also a couple other other tools called slates, posters and boards that have a little bit more functionality than just signs and they're a part of the education edition. So one option you have when when you're playing Minecraft and if you want to you or have your students use use a sign. Um, they're, they're a simple way to just place some basic information. You can use them as labels or to give small instructions. They the signs themselves don't have a whole lot of, of space for writing. And so that you want to use them when they have smaller. Uh, smaller amounts of text on them. And what happens is you, you right click. You place it and then the sign shows up on your screen and you enter your text. And there's no real sign to show you. So just as a hint there, after you've entered the text into your sign, you just hit escape and then the sign will be there with. With the text on it ready to go. <clears throat> so. One limitation. The signs have. Is that they're not editable, so if you create a sign and you goofed up and you don't like it or it's no longer. Uh, usable, you just have to break it and replace it. So the other option that's now available with Minecraft Edition is called a slate, and it's similar in size. Like a sign, it's about one block. It's got a few more lines of text available, but it also has this feature here where you can toggle this switch back and forth to either lock it or unlock it. So as a, as a teacher, when you place it, if you set that down there, you can you can lock it so students can't change it, but then you could go back later and edit it if you wanted to, or if you want, you can leave it unlocked and use it as a place for students to come and, and they can write stuff down on it and change it and several different people can come and add to it. And so there's, there's a lot of different ways you can use this. It's a very, very versatile tool. A uh, couple other options here. Um, they, they have the same functionality as a slate. They can be. They can be uh, toggled whether they can be edited or not edited um, and they're, they're just some differences in size. So a poster. It's just it's twice the width of a slate, so it's got a little bit more room um, and like signs and posters and slates. They can be freestanding, so if you place them on the ground, these little little legs appear. And they'll just show up standing or you can actually place them right onto a wall. So here I've got a brick wall and I've got my boards placed on there. And so a board is actually. Three blocks wide. Or. Let me double check that. So yeah, they're <laughs> they're three times wider and twice as tall as a, as a sign, so a lot bigger, a lot more space that you can use for for typing large amounts of instructions or students can use them to create and put written work onto it. I'll, I'll share some of the ways that I've used these in my classroom in just a second. Um, the the one thing I wanted to to point out real quickly though that's really fun and, and really helpful with with these boards and posters is that the immersive reader is embedded in Minecraft. And so when you're playing Minecraft and you come across a sign, if you what if while you're looking at it, you press the I button on your keyboard, it'll open up that sign in the immersive reader and then you can have it read to you out loud the text and it has all the great features that the immersive reader has. So if you want it to read a little bit slower, you can slow down the, the, the pace. You can change the voice from male or female. You can highlight roads and or rows of words or specific words can even translate. So there's a lot of really cool um, accessibility features here that can help students to to get the information off of posters and boards. 
and so if you have ESL students or students with other um, things where they can use benefit from that accessibility, it's right there in Minecraft ready to go. Uh, some examples of how how I've used this. My uh, my first year using Minecraft in the classroom, my students decided they wanted to do a collaborative Jurassic Park kind of world. We were studying about dinosaurs, and so they each wanted to create an exhibit within the same world. And so I hosted the world, and they went in and they built models, and they had all this research they needed to do, and they created a giant museum and utilized these posters and boards to, to present the information they'd learned about their, their dinosaur with their model. And it was amazing to see how creative they got. We had students who wanted to do like a, a saber-toothed tiger from the La Brea tar pits in Los Angeles. And, and he built the bones of the saber-toothed tiger and then surrounded it with black glass in Minecraft and made it look like there was tar surrounding the saber-toothed tiger. And he put up these boards and he left one board there so that he could have students leave feedback or kind of a visitor or guest log. So as people visited the world, they could leave comments. And there's a lot of cool, really cool how students could just be really creative and and share what they were learning in a way that was authentic. Uh, we shared that world out on social media so other people could could check it out and join it. And Minecraft has such a great uh, ability to have a low floor and a high ceiling that students could be really creative with it. And other students just built some simple models. Um, but really, really fun, great tools. Great way for students to share their knowledge in a way that's exciting and engaging. Um, of course, it's there's lots of ways that I've been able to use Teams. I'll hit those briefly. I know there's some new exciting ways coming up and I'm going to turn it over to Melinda here just in a second, but over remote learning, for example, we created a, a team for our Minecraft club at our school where we could post join codes and join each other's worlds. We got on Teams calls and chats. They they asked for a, a special channel where they could share all the updates that were coming out over remote learning with Minecraft Dungeons and some of the other Nether updates and just a great place to build community. Um, as a teacher, you can add your 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 MIC world files, MC world files right in as a as a part of a as an assignment. So if you found a lesson you want to use, you can do it that way. And of course, students can turn in those PDFs they've created using their book and quill. So anyway, hopefully these were some great tools. Things get you excited about using Minecraft in your classroom. Um, I want to go ahead. Melinda's got going to give us the inside scoop on some upcoming features here with Minecraft Education Edition and Teams. Wonderful. Thank you, Mike. Yes, yeah, so what I'm going to show you today are a couple of things that we are still working on. These are these are actively works in progress. Uh, and so what you're looking at are some of the mockups because the, the experience that we're coding up right now is a little bit messy. Um, so I'm going to show you our uh, the kind of the design target of where we want to go. Um, we have heard from from educators that uh, more is needed to be able to make it easy for you to assign a lesson um, and that connections to Teams would be a great way to do that. Um, so what I'm going to show you are some of the flows of how we're envisioning that you might be able to assign a lesson directly through Teams, um, and then a preview of some work that we're doing to move forward with classroom management. Um, so how you can easily display those join codes and uh, join your students in their worlds. So we can go ahead and go to the next slide. So on this screen here, you're seeing the experience of if you've gone into a library it, or into our library in game, you've selected this lesson, Algebra Architecture, uh, and you can imagine clicking that share button or the share a link button would open up this panel that would allow you to select a sharing target. Um, so you can choose to share a link to that lesson uh, in Teams. You could share it in email. You could copy it and paste it into your uh, into Canvas or whichever LMS you choose. But if we go ahead um, and advance to the next side, you'll see what happens if you click Teams. We're going to host that assigned to Teams and share to Teams directly in Minecraft so you don't have to leave uh, and you'll be able to choose the class that you want to assign that lesson to um, and then add in all the details of how it will be graded and when it is due and then go ahead and click to assign. So on the next screen, 
you'll see what the student in your class then would see. Um, so now going into that assignment, the student will see all the details that you've added and they'll see a link to the world. Now if you if you're using Minecraft today, you know that our share links are not ideal. They're not clickable. Uh, they offer a deep link into the into the world in the library lesson, but you can't paste them in OneNote. You can't share them via via Twitter or any of the other tools. So we're going to change that. Uh, and so if the student were to click on that link, um, they would see what's on our next slide here. They'll be taken to this, so a web browser will open that's going to handle the handoff to Minecraft directly. Um, so the web browser is going to ensure that they are supported um, while we open Minecraft. If they don't have Minecraft installed, uh, students will be able to click to, to download Minecraft and install the right version for the de their device, um, and then go ahead and click again to open Minecraft once it's installed. But assuming Minecraft is there, um, this web browser will help ho uh, open up Minecraft and navigate them to the right lesson world that you have assigned to them in Teams. Uh, in addition to that, um, we're so here on this screen, this is just a, a reference back that we're going to be adding other uh, support for other L LMS um, tools in here. So, you know, let us know which ones you would like to see. What are the, the areas where you'd most like to share um, and send a link? Uh, but again, you'll be able to copy that link and paste it wherever you like. All right, on to the next slide. So this one is very much a work in progress, but we're really excited about it. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to put it out in pilot uh, sometime this summer. Here you can see uh, our, our design for a Teams app. So you'd be able to add this app uh, in Teams and then navigate into the classrooms with which you're using Minecraft and see a list of all of the students in your classroom who are actively hosting a world. Um, so this should make it easy for you to share join codes across uh, with other students in the class or to do a one-click join and hop into the world that one of your students is hosting. Um, long term, this is where we'd like to be able to add some additional classroom management features, um, but our first step will be to, to add that, to that list for you of, of who's hosting uh, and, and a quick join experience. So we're excited to continue to partner with you and other educators around the country to, to develop um, and prioritize the next set of features for classroom management. So thanks, back to you, Mike. Awesome, I'm really excited about that, that option of being able to see everybody right there in Teams. That's gonna be really cool. We'll take advantage of that. So next, I'm excited to welcome our, our special guest, Global Mentors. We've got James and Stefan joining us, I, I believe both from the UK. Thanks for, for coming in and, uh, and joining us today. And I'd love, uh, let's, let's go ahead, let's start with uh, Stefan if we could. I'd um, love to hear how, how are you using micro or Minecraft Education Edition in your classroom? Hi, uh, so uh, I'm a teacher in France actually, so oh, I teach, no worries, uh, I teach in a secondary school as uh, I teach technology and so um, I usually use Minecraft to create uh, immersive experiences and by the way I have the privilege to collaborate to the Immersive Minds team uh, uh, to create some contents too. So. Uh, lately, I used Minecraft during this confinement period uh, with my own students because we couldn't, uh, you know, uh, interact um, uh, physically and they were all in their home. So I tried to find some ways to interact with them and create some science lessons uh, as a remote uh, teaching uh, activity. So I, I found out that a problem they had is that they couldn't go outside and Sometimes even in the classroom, you can't really interact with nature or, you know, uh, the neighborhood, uh, the forest or whatever. It's quite difficult sometimes to go you know, outside to do some experiments. So we did it using Minecraft. And uh, for instance, we, we worked on uh, materials and we discovered all, uh, what are the kind of materials you can find in nature. And so we went as an experiment outside using Minecraft. So that was an exciting experience to teach them what kind of materials you can discover. I can share my screen just to make sure, you know, having a look at it. 
So, uh, so just a few minutes. And so, yeah. Uh, and so the, the students uh, were really excited uh, by the, the fact that they were able to, uh, you know, interact with each other. And the thing uh, that, that fear the most is to have this kind of loss of connection with uh, their, uh, their their pals. And they were really happy to have that kind of, you know, digital playground. They missed so much because they were at each uh, separated in their in their home. So uh, this lesson was exciting be because of, of course of this, you know, science uh, experiments we could have, but it was exciting too because it was a way for them to meet each other and to interact and play and have some fun and, you know, just walk around and chat and because it was an opportunity uh, for this. So this is the word we used. And the lesson here, you, as you see, was based on some, ba uh, you know, uh, camps where the students were, worked as, as teams and they had to gather and to mine materials and to, and to bring back the materials to their own uh, camp and to sort the materials in the correct room a room for minerals, a room for the metals, a room for the organic materials, and a, a room for the plastics. So they had all these materials and they had to sort out what is the correct family for each of them and to organize a kind of exhibition in these rooms. So that was something that was, of course, confinement was a big problem, but it was also an opportunity to you know, to bring into the classroom a new way to teach too. Thank you, Stefan. I, I I think my students went through that same thing. I we did a we were researching a, an artist from the UK named Andy Goldsworthy in one of my art classes, and he did land art where the he makes stuff outside out of natural materials. And we did a really fun Minecraft lesson with that, where students created their own land art within within Minecraft, so I, I, I think that's a great idea. I was wondering, so one of the questions that I'm asked a lot, and I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, but is when you're when you're when you're managing students in a digital environment like Minecraft, what what tips do you have for other teachers on how to keep students engaged and focused when when they're using Minecraft? Oh, one one of the key uh, to, for the success is to have very clear assignments and instructions within the game itself, because very often once your students are within the words, it's quite difficult to tell them you should do this or that and to stop the game. Even if you can, of course, pause the game with the Minecraft education classroom features, but it's more easy to have this, you know, these NPCs within the game, giving them instructions. And so it's a kind of a way to help them during the game because once they launch in the game, it's far more easier to 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 give them instructions through NPCs than to pose the game to to select for explanations, for instance, you know. Yeah, preparation very important and having yeah, clear clear is. expectations and goals. Awesome. Um, any other advice you'd have for for teachers using Minecraft for the first time? Oh, I think uh, the goal is not necessarily to go to something very exotic. But maybe to start with something you already do in a different way with a classical uh, lesson and to adapt it to something that will be meaningful for your students. Because very often we try to, you know, to figure out a way to tell them, yeah, in life we need math, we need that and that, but it's on a paper and, and they don't really see the connection with the real world. So just try to create some situations that will be meaningful for your students so that they can see that the tools uh, that usually uh, discover uh, in the classroom uh, are used for something that is connected to the, the real world, for instance, like the math, mathematics. Meaningful situations. Awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate you joining with us and, and sharing your experiences. Thanks. So next, I'm going to pull my screen back here and we're going to welcome James. Thanks for, for coming. I'd love to, to hear how you are using Minecraft in your classroom as well. Yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. Lovely to be here. Um, yeah, so I've been using Minecraft in the classroom for, for a number of years now, um, but 
the situation that we find ourselves in at the moment with with remote learning i've I've had to use it in a in a slightly different way than before so it's been a, a you know a brilliant opportunity actually to to get our learners engaged with a project um in a slightly different way so i'm a teacher from wales uh, in the uk um and the project i'd like to share with you and i guess how we used it to assess learning uh, was called amazing architecture now, this project was based on a show uh, in the UK, actually, a TV show called Grand Designs. And the objectives of the project really were to get students to think about um, the role of an architect in designing a building. So what inspires an architect? What's the procedure they need to follow? Um, and then really, you know, to investigate architecture from around the world think about different influences, think about the reasoning why things um, are built in a certain way. And then for learners to create their own amazing architecture and explain their choices and their method and procedure. Um, so if you could move on to the next slide, please. Um, and one of the things, and I just want to echo actually uh, what we've already heard about sharing information with learners and keeping learners um, on task really. I used NPCs within the world um, to actually give information, set the learning objective um, and keep students on track. And I think it was very important there to sort of manage the manage the tool. So it wasn't an overload of information. It was very much uh, some information and then a challenge or a task to go with it. So we use our MPCs um, to place information on the boards and, and signs within the world. Um, but if we can move on to the next slide, please. Um, so some of the examples of some of the, the buildings that the, the children made were, uh, and again, it was very important that they did their own research, they created their own plan, you know, they, they followed that and they came up with some very, very different and original designs. Um, we put links into the world through MPCs that they could access um, some resources. They could, um, they were challenged to find their own things as well. So once they'd done their research, they'd done some planning, we very much then, uh, so if you can go, go to the next slide, please. Um, the planning was a really, really important stage. Now, if I was going to do this within the classroom, obviously I can see exactly what each student is doing. I can, you know, I can keep students on track, but because this was a distance learning, a remote learning project, um, we used teams. So we set up a class team and we asked our learners when they planned their building, their, their amazing architecture, to share those plans back with us. Um, and you know, teams really, really effective for that. And actually, it allowed me then to to see our students' designs and give them feedback, because I think that planning process is so important. You know, and in, unless enough time is given to the consideration about that, sometimes the overall product, the, the final design, can can suffer. Um, so, if you could go to the next slide, please. And when also to using Teams, we asked learners to use the camera tool to take photographs of what they were doing. Now this building completely blew me away. Obviously the, the, um, the time we're going through at the moment, um, I asked students to research a building from, from somewhere in the world and, and think about creating their own. Well, two of our learners were thinking about field hospitals and they noticed that one of the big, well, the Excel Centre in London is, is currently being used as a field hospital. So they researched that, they looked at the building and they actually designed their own. So for me, it was so powerful because it's almost helping learners to make sense of the current situation. And then they use boards and signs, they place them in different parts of the world. So, you know, for for example, this this slide here, um, the child created the isolation ward and they placed a board there to actually know well, you know, take care when you go into this to this room. Um, so again, really, really powerful and a really effective way of sharing the information um, back with me so I can assess, you know, I can think about giving them pointers a way to continue. Um, and on the next slide, please. The camera and a book and quill combined was so powerful. Um, after the children had created their designs, 
um, I asked them through Teams to share their Creator Book and Quill, choose uh, the photographs that best re represented their build and the information to go with that and to share that back. And then, you know, by using Teams in that way, other learners were able to access the the, the book and quill, um, the published book that, that they'd created. So it was a really, really effective way of sharing with other with other students and sharing that information with me. So a really, really effective way, way of that. So I, awesome, I, James. That's that's a, that's amazing. That's mind blowing. It's, it's amazing what kids can do when you when you give them the, the right groundwork and they get creative and I know I've seen a number of times just having students do mind blowing projects. This thanks you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, for the next little bit, I'd love to hear again, just kind of the same questions that Stefan was talking about. How what are some keys for for managing a classroom? Both you talked about remotely, but also in class. How do you how do you keep your students on task and make sure that it's a, a productive, positive learning experience? I think. Oh, with it, uh, with it. With any tool, it's really important to think about the why. And I think, you know, why why are we going to use it in this way? So thinking about those clear learning objectives um, before, you know, before even planning the lesson. So having that clear and then using things like the, the boards, the MPCs to give manageable tasks to learners. So we're not overloading and we're not expecting them to do too much. But also at the same time, uh, we're not putting too many in because I think it's got to be the correct balance of, you know, information sharing and then task, you know, so um, not not overloading students, I think is a key thing and, and using using those those really effective educational features to really support and enhance learning is, is key. So besides this, what other types of projects have your have your students done? We've, we've done an awful lot of projects that focus on the heritage of Wales and local history. Um, we did a, one of our most recent projects actually looked at entertainment in the local area during uh, during the past. So and students couldn't actually believe. Um, so our the town the school is situated in is very much like any other town in Wales, um, but you really have to travel outside of the town for to go to the cinema, to go to the theatre. Um, but you know, so learners created a virtual museum of what their town was, the town of Ferndale in the past. So they um, created things like they found out they'd been famous rock bands that played in the area. So they created the Workman's Hall, which was the theatre that that they played in. Um, it just it just blew my mind actually. So getting students really to research, to interpret history and using Minecraft as that really powerful vehicle to share with others. It's just been mind blowing. And the thing that I found really effective is my learners have shared this project with people who haven't got a clue about Minecraft, you know, um, and in all, you know, all intents and purposes, um, it's a virtual museum that they've created and a really effective vehicle to, to interpret history and share their learning with others. So, you know, it just, it just blows my mind actually what what a versatile tool Minecraft is and you know and the potential it can have on on really developing higher order skills with our learners. Yeah, those those soft skills or at least that's the term that, that I hear here a lot. The the conflict resolution, the teamwork, the things that we don't always measure in a classroom when we're assessing, but Minecraft brings a lot of those things to life and, and gives you a lot of learning moments. Um, by the way, I, I love the fact that you used Grand Designs. I love that TV show. Oh, I, watch, I, I watch that here all the time, but we only get two seasons on Netflix. So <laughs> um, anyway, uh, thanks again. I, I you love your passion for, for what you're doing as a teacher and for the examples. Um, anything else? Just kind of last final advice you'd give give teachers starting out? I'd say get to know Minecraft. Now, the one thing I will always say to people, and I would certainly confess this myself, I'm not a master builder in Minecraft at all, 
but I know the basics. I've got to know Minecraft as a vehicle. And I think the tutorials using those get in teachers to engage with those to begin with. So they, they've got an understanding of what Minecraft is. But don't be afraid if your students are a hundred times better at building than you are, because you know I, I certainly it took me very very quickly to realise I'll never have the same skills as as the majority of my learners. But having that understanding of how the game works and the educational features that are within Minecraft are really all I need to know to to really create unforgettable learning experiences for my students. Awesome. And hey, Stefan, can you jump back in? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well with with classroom management and advice for for teachers. Yeah, uh, well. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I would say that. Uh, managing classroom is, uh, uh, you know, accepting not to have 100 uh, percent control of what is going on too. Of course, I, I totally agree with James and I love his lessons. And uh, and well, it, 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 my, my thoughts are, are the same, but um, I will add that once you have set some, uh, you know, tasks, your students, it's, it's you, you need to give them some free time and some moments when they can really interact because the power of Minecraft is very is the way that is something that will bring some collaborative interactions uh, within your classroom and you can't really you know uh, guess what will happen during the lesson and more and very very often the students will go uh, way further than you than you expected so don't focus too much on control because Many amazing things will happen uh, in the classroom during these moments you didn't expect, you know. I I, I totally 100% agree. Thank you very much for, for throwing that in there. And um, thanks again for joining us, James, Stefan. It's, it's been a real pleasure and love hearing your experiences and some of the amazing things that you guys have been doing. So thank you. So we're going to move on here to the to the next couple slides uh, be sure again this is a week long event um, tomorrow we'll be exploring uh, social emotional learning and some some great tools that are in the lesson library uh, so please again join us tomorrow for that and then kind of some some last couple of notes there's some great ways to to stay involved in the minecraft education community there's a newsletter um, there's some ways to get certified, uh, become a global Minecraft mentor yourself. And then of course we'd love, uh, love for everyone. There's, there's kind of this unique situation in the world with remote learning. Um, and there's, there's a great resource right on the education.minecraft.net page. Um, the, it's the links there on the slide for, for distance learning. There's, there's a lot of really cool ways that you can incorporate uh, Minecraft into your distance learning. There's there's been even things on the news um, with graduations. There's there's a lot of great resources there, so please um, check that out. Also, for your time today, there's an achievement code that we'd love for you to redeem at education.microsoft.com, and we'll leave this slide up so that you can go to that website. The code's there on the page, and you click on your your sign in button, and then there's a, a redeem achievement code and then enter the code that's there on the screen and you'll get a little badge that'll show up in your in your profile for the training so please take a minute and do that we'd like to thank everybody for joining us today and um susie and melinda the rest of our team that's on this call thank you were there any questions that you saw in the chat window that would be great to share with everybody who's joining our event today uh, that you'd like to circle back to I saw lots of great questions about content, um, so would re remind folks to explore our website if you're looking for uh, lesson ideas. And the website includes a lot of details, uh, some videos to help get started, ways to um, to encourage assessment. A lot of those, many of the lessons on our site are also in the library and game. Um, so you know, exploring the library once you open up Minecraft uh, is a, is a great idea. Um, and then lots of lots of excitement about trying it out in the classroom. 
Oh, it's exciting times. Are there any training resources that will help teachers get started with Minecraft? Like if they've never learned how to play? James made a great statement about he's not a he's not a master builder, but he certainly knows the basics. So is there a place where teachers can get started? Definitely. This is Susie. Um, we have a bunch of different courses on the Microsoft Educator Center, the same place that that code is going to take you that's on the screen right now. We are actually updating our online course on the MEC um, and it's going to be published at the end of June. Our course right now is called My Minecraft Journey. If you're interested in getting started right now, feel free to go dive in and take a look at that course. Otherwise, I highly recommend checking back at the end of the month. Our new course is going to be called a Minecraft Teacher Academy um, and it is a great walkthrough of getting comfortable in the game, learning how to play, move around, break in place blocks, practicing using all of these wonderful assessment tools that we've learned about today and also then taking how do I look at all of the wonderful lessons that are on the website and adapt them to my standards in my curriculum that I am teaching. So I highly recommend checking out that course and like I mentioned it will be published at the end of this month. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Susie, for sharing that. I know that that course is a wonderful course. I'm looking forward to the Teacher Academy that's coming out. So we would like to just take this opportunity to remind everybody about next steps. Um, be sure to go redeem your code so you get um, some credit for being here in the Educator Center. And we'd like to thank all of our guests, again, the Minecraft Education team from Microsoft, our global mentors, and Mike for leading this call, and hope that you'll all join us back here tomorrow for uh, social emotional learning and the resources that are in the community as well as joining us the rest of the week for some of the other sessions coming up. Thank you so much, and you all have a wonderful day or evening, depending on where you are in the world. Thanks so much.